So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy, Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So the next video, man, top 10 shocking coma stories, bro. I think one of the scariest things um, you could you could go through in life is, is a coma situation. Me personally, I've never been in a coma, but you hear the stories about, you know, people going through life, everything's all good, everything's all great, and then something happens, and then they're in a coma for eight months or a year or however long, six, five months. You know what I mean? That's, that's different. Do you know what a person has to go through? You know what I mean? Imagine, imagine being straight today, cool, everything's fine, and then you sleep. But when you wake up, it's seven, eight months later. Like, how, how do you, how do you mentally recover from that? Like, how do you, how do you recover from that? Like, comas are super, super scary to me, man. Because I know what it's like to be in a hospital bed for months at a time. You know what I mean? Your muscles start breaking down, not like breaking down, deteriorating, but you're losing like muscle strength. So your body becomes weak. So you have to regain that. You know what I mean? And that stuff comes with time. It comes with therapy. It comes with a lot of different things. So that side of it, I understand wholeheartedly. So like I said, it's I've never experienced it, bro, but bro just i could tell that's just probably one of the most traumatizing experiences to go through and we're about to hear 10 stories of that man so if you're new to the channel man hit the subscribe button join the fam real quick moment of silence for the haters that's enough now run the likes up let's get to it we're going to be talking about comas. A coma is where a person becomes unconscious and is totally unable to wake up now there are many reasons why this can happen Happen. It can last for a few days, weeks, months, or even years. Each story is unique and interesting, but here are some that really, really stand out. You're not going to believe them. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the top 10 shocking coma stories. Coming out number 10, we have Edwarda O'Bara. In 1970, 16 year old Edwarda was rushed to hospital. She was diabetic and shaking after not getting enough insulin. As she slipped in and out of consciousness, she turned to her mother, Kay, and said, Promise me you won't leave me, will you, mommy? She promised that, but that was the last time they ever spoke. Edwarda fell into a deep coma, a coma which lasted for 42 years. In all that time, her mother never left her side. The mother died in 2007, and Edwarda's sister took over her full-time care. Finally, in 2012, Edwarda herself died at the age of 59. Only Whoa! I, I, I don't know, I just kept waiting for them to say, like, she eventually woke up. And then when he started off, I'm thinking of, as y'all are familiar with, like, diabetic comas and stuff like that. Insulin, when a person has to deal with that type of stuff. But, um, and the only reason I know about, like, the diabetic coma and different things like that from being an EMT and, and rolling up on scenes to where somebody has slipped into a diabetic coma. But 40-something years, bro. And can you blame them? Like, I, I don't blame them at all. Like, for me, I'm going to hold on to my family member as long as I can, especially, especially when you look at me and you say, promise you won't leave me. That's a promise I'm holding on. And she held that promise on until she passed away. Like, I can't do nothing but salute and respect that to the utmost. Finally, in 2012, Edwarda herself died at the age of 59, only having been conscious for 16 of those years. All right, at number nine now, we have the addiction. In 2009, a toddler called Ya Wen was hit by a speeding van in China. She spent five days in a coma with severe injuries. When she woke up, she had changed, shall we say. Her mother said that she started acting like an adult. She started drinking three glasses of beer a day and smoking cigarettes. A three wait, 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 what? Hold up. She had changed, shall we say. Her mother said that she started acting like an adult. She started drinking three glasses of beer a day and smoking cigarettes. 
a three-year-old. Her mother found her hiding in a bathroom and smoking after stealing them, but now she gets them on credit from the local store, apparently. I have so many questions. Obviously, I want to know how did this happen at all, but I also want to know what are the parents thinking? Their three-year-old wakes up from a coma, starts smoking and drinking, and they just go with it? Maybe they're the ones that need to... So your three-year-old wakes up and says, hey, hey, I want to rob a bank. So we're just going to support that habit too? Hey, man, I just want to, you know, after that coma, I really like to get into the whole serial killer lifestyle. Like, wait, what? I get supporting your kids, you know what I mean, for things they want to do. But that comes with, well, like, you, you, you got to be understanding of what you're supporting. You, you get what I'm saying? This is all within reason. Like, that's that's taking it to a whole nother level. To wake up. All right, next up we have I Love You. You are not gonna believe this one. Wendy Richmond is a woman from the UK who slips into a coma every time she tells her grandchildren she loves them. She suffers from conditions such as cataplexy and narcolepsy, which can be triggered by a number of different things, leaving her in a sort of waking sleep state and totally paralyzed. When her grandchildren were born, she realized that one of the things that caused this was having an intense moment of love for them. This strange brain function has meant that she's had to emotionally distance herself from her own grandchildren. She can't run up to them and tell them she loves them without the danger of falling into a coma. Moving on to number seven. Yo, and then you know if some people out there would have like, they would have used that to their advantage. Could you imagine knowing that you're living with your grandma and if she says she loves you, she goes into a coma or a deep sleep for a while or a, a little or a trance, that's gonna happen for a little bit. So you know people trying to sneak out the house, right? What are they gonna do? Uh, uh, hey, yo, can you come out tonight? Can you sneak out tonight? We got this party we wanna go to. All right, cool, let me tell grandmas I love her. Yo, y'all, like, like some people's mind, and if my mind was able to think about that, imagine some people trying to take advantage of her. It's crazy. To them and tell them she loves them without the danger of falling into a coma. Moving on to number seven now, we have Terry Wallace. In 1984, 19 year old Terry Wallace was involved in a car accident that left him in a paralyzed state from the neck down and in a coma. Doctors thought he would never regain consciousness ever again, but his parents didn't think that was the case and they put him in a rehabilitation center. They visited him every other weekend for years. And then in 2003, 19 years after the accident, Terry woke up. He saw his mom and said, Mama, and then asked for Pepsi and milk. He slowly recovered, and although he remains disabled and unable to form short-term memories, he can communicate with those. See, as a parent, it's your job not to give up on your child. I don't care what the medical professionals say. They're not the end-all, be-all. They are not. I used to tell that to my moms all the time before she passed away, bro. We, hey, we gonna try until we can't try no more. They're not the end all be all, bro. You know, they make educated, not, I don't wanna say guesses, but they make educated decisions. So, you know what I mean? It's not 100%. Nothing's 100% sure around him. However, in many ways, he is still trapped in 1984. He refuses to acknowledge that he isn't 19 anymore, and he thinks the US president is Ronald Reagan. One last creepy fact is that this crash happened on Friday the 13th, and Terry started speaking again all those years later on you guessed it, Friday the 13th. Coming out number six now, we have Sam Carter. In 2008, 60 year old Sam Carter slipped into a coma after a case of severe anemia, where his red blood cell count got too low. At the hospital, he was in a coma for three days and was given just a 30% chance of recovery. His wife was desperate and asked if there was anything she could do to help. The doctor suggested playing music to him. So she placed some headphones on his head and played I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones, and he woke up. After fully recovering, Sam said that the song gave him new energy and pulled him out of his coma. The song choice was no accident either. His wife knew that it was the first single Sam had ever bought when he was 17 years old. If you guys- I was wondering what made her pick that. You know what I mean? Because as soon as they said play music, what's the first thing you thought of automatically in your mind? When, when, a, when a mother's pregnant with a child, they tell you to play what? Classical music. So I thought she was gonna go get classical music. Then they said she played the Beatles. The Beatles. I'm like, okay, what made what? What was your thought process? But that was smart on her, her part. 
See, if you know your significant other, you know the things that they like, you can play to that. And she did, and it worked out. That's dope. As we're in a coma, what song do you think would wake you up? Next up at number five now. What song would wake me up? I don't know, man. It's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. I don't know, man. If she could probably dig to something in my childhood, I would I would definitely have to say it would be Michael Jackson. I grew up uh, like a Michael Jackson fan as a kid, bro. The movie Moonwalker, it's watching that all the time. Now we have John Roach. He was a 50 year old man who chose to be in a coma. He was suffering from chronic pain that left even the slightest touch to his skin feeling like a blowtorch. Nothing had worked and so he took part in a radical new treatment, a ketamine induced coma. He slipped into the coma for five days while the ketamine restarted his whole nervous system, kind of like rebooting a computer. Then they woke him up and they sent him home with small doses of the treatment to self administer but not enough to put him back into another coma. John says his life changed forever. He's now no longer in agony and can enjoy the simple things in life like holding his wife's hand or picking up his grandkids that he just couldn't do before the coma. All right, coming at number four now, we have the sex addict. In May 2010, an 81-year-old granddad was put under house arrest because he developed a sex addiction after falling out of a plum tree and- Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. How old is this? this this uh, Hugh Hefner's cousin, how old is <laughs> Hugh Hefner's cousin right here? On the house, we have the sex addict. In May 2010, an 81-year-old grand- 81 years old, bro. Huh? If that don't give you hope that you're still rocking and rolling at 81, I don't know what will, man. Dad was put under house arrest because he developed a sex addiction after falling out of a plum tree and going into a coma for four days. That's it. That is the strangest sentence I've ever said in my life. But let's break it down. Angelo De Luca from Switzerland needed an operation after his coma and when he woke up, he started spending thousands of dollars at a local brothel and fell in love with one of the girls there. That might sound nice, but his son believed he was being preyed upon and a court gave him control of his father's bank accounts because his sex addiction made him unfit to govern his own affairs. What an unbelievable story. Coming Hey, I'm just saying. Sound like that 81 dude life is more exciting than most of ours. <laughs> yo, yo, uh, what what do y'all expect me to be doing at 81, huh? Just sitting in the recliner each day, trying to eat my jello, trying to watch some some old rerun shows. That's what y'all expect me to do at 81? No. I'm gonna be, I already told y'all, I'm gonna be different at 81, bro. For starters, I'm going out to get my paper, if we still receive newspapers outside, and, and my robe with nothing on up under it. And you better hope the wind don't swing it open, bro, because I'm not gonna care. You know what I'm saying? In at number three now, we have Half Awake. In 1988, a Polish man called Jan Grebski injured his head while at work on a railroad. He fell into a coma for 15 years, finally waking up in 2003. By that point, Poland had changed a lot and it was no longer a communist country. People were eager to hear about what he thought of all of that, but Jan said he already knew. He said that he actually woke up from his coma after just four years, but he was still paralyzed and mute. He spent a further 11 11 years in this state before finally being able to talk. He even learned to walk again. I don't know about you guys, but I think that sounds even scarier. I would yeah. never want to be conscious but unable to communicate. Sounds like an absolute nightmare. All right, next. Sound like you in like the sunken place. You know what I mean? At number two now, we have bilingual. People spend years of their lives mastering a second language, but for Sandra Ralik, it came to her in her sleep. This 13-year-old Croatian girl went into a coma for 24 hours, and when she woke up, she was unable to speak Croatian. Instead, she could communicate perfectly in German. This baffled everyone. Her parents said that she had only just started studying German at school, yet here she was, speaking it fluently and now unable to talk in the language she was raised with. If any of you guys are worrying about passing your French exams this year, please don't put yourself into a coma. It's not gonna work. And See, that lets me know like our brain is, is more we need to learn about our brain. Because what I'm thinking is she, like I said, she was studying up on that language and her brain was retaining it, but she just couldn't tap in to be able to, you know what I mean, bring it out, speak it fluently. But it was it was stored in her brain. And when she woke up, she was able to tap in 
to that part of her brain and the other part which had her na na her native language she lost that you know what i mean so that just lets me know we need to study the brain more man and learn more about the functions of our brains and how to tap into certain portions bro that's why when you hear like music and stuff it activates you hear music that you may have heard as a kid it activates a memory in your brain you know what i mean it's so much we, more we need to learn about the human brain that could probably benefit us and take us to places we didn't even know exist for us. Finally now, at number one, we have the F-bomb. In 2004, Joey Hopkins, a 22-year-old British man, fell into a coma after a serious car crash. His mother, Joanne, stayed by his bedside every single day for 41 days, hoping that he would show some sign of life. And then, she noticed that he was trying to speak. She leaned in close to him to hear him whisper his first words since falling into the coma, and he said, F*** off. Yeah, you heard me right. He told his mom to F off, but she cried with relief. She had told the nurse that she'd know he was getting better if he swore at her and said that when he actually did, she believed it was his way of telling her he was going to be okay. After that, he slowly began the road to recovery. It's a very weird coma story, I know, but clearly that is a mother who knows the relationship with her son inside and out. Well, guys, I hope you found... Um... Yeah... That probably would have went a little, a little bit different with me and 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 my mom. You know what I mean? Coma or not, hospital bed or not, I, I'd have probably caught a slap or a shoe to the face. Um, <laughs> she'd have said, "You said what to me?" She'd have forgot I had just came out of a coma, and she probably would have beat me to death, bro. At at an adult age, so it was no disrespect to my mom at that like that. You know what I mean? So. But, um, yeah, man, crazy, crazy, crazy stories, bro. Coma stories, man. You know, it's just it's, it's insane to think that these things happen. But one thing was a common thing throughout this whole um, video was people not giving up on their family, bro. Not giving up on their children. You know what I mean? As you wouldn't expect them to. So, y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what y'all thought about this. And um, stick around and stay tuned, man, until the next reaction. I'm gone. Peace.